So this time around I will be testing out the brand new MX-5 thermal paste from Arctic. I don't know how, how's it called, is it Arctic cooling or just Arctic nowadays, but some of you already requested me to test the Arctic MX-5 the same way I've been testing these high-end thermal pastes recently. So uh, the, the uh, Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme, Cryonaut G GC Extreme and now the GD900 and so on. So. Uh, I still have the uh, same rig uh, set up and ready to go, so uh, I think I'll just compare the MX-5 against the KPX again, so we can just use the same graphs once again, so should be quite easy. But anyway, so the MX-5 comes in a very simple packaging, actually, so uh, no uh, plastic applicators included, at least not on this uh, 8 gram size tube. They have some, uh, some sweepstakes competition every month, apparently, so they give out $1,000 apparently every month. So, uh, don't know, seems quite fun, but anyways, that's just the actual tube, no applicators included whatsoever. The uh, color of this thermal paste should be very close to the uh, Kimpin Cooling KPX, so it should have some light blue colored look in it, or look into it. So, uh, yeah, I will be using the same rig once again, so uh, Z490 Dark Kimpin, the same 10900K, same memory, same operating system and so on. And okay, that's how the MX-5 looks like, so it has a bit similar color as the Kimping Cooley KPX. Obviously a little bit lighter blue, but that's not something that obviously matters that much in the end. So there's no, platic, there's no plastic applicator included, so I just used the applicator which I got with the GT900. So uh, some of you were still asking that how do I apply thermal paste? When I go for the very good like mounts and good applications, I prefer to spread manually like this. When I'm just doing like simple CPU testing, like with old 775 and 1366 CPUs, I just apply like five dots. So one at the center, then one at each corner, or just the uh, X method, or just a ball in the middle, but it depends on the IHS size as well. Manual spreading is, al is always the most reliable way, because then you at least know the whole IHS has been covered. But now let's see how the paste actually performs. Okay, so that's pretty much the same test setup once again. Same components, same cooling setup pretty much. And now Prime 95 has been running for roughly like uh, 12 minutes or so. I'll open CPU-Z just to show you guys, but anyways, so at the moment the average of the maximum core temperatures is somewhere, I think that's close to like 71 degrees. 5.2 across all of the 10 cores, same voltage, same low line, same low line calibration setting, memory is 4800 CAS 18 and 4A on the cache. And the ambient, ambient room temperature is 24.6, so that's like 46.4. Uh, 46.3 so uh, I think the MX-5 should score somewhere between KPX and the GD900. GD900 was was it 46.4 from the three mounts in uh, Pro95 so uh, I will be doing three mounts with this as well and I also purchased well I purchased two of these tubes in total so I will make this I will make this next mount with the second tube because sometimes tubes and the individual batches can vary, like what we saw with the GC Extreme one year ago. So uh, will 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 be interesting to see. But I would like to see some thermal paste that could be like visibly better than KPX, Cryonaut Extreme, Standard Cryonaut, and GC Extreme that would score like close to 44 degrees uh, in this test scenario. But it, that's obviously extremely hard thing to achieve. But we'll see. So I'll let this to run, and once I've made three mounts with the MX-5 and KPX, I will wrap up with the actual scores and the conclusion, and then we can talk about like uh, longevity when it comes to thermal pastes. So get back to you after a while. And okay, I just finished with the actual testing, so I did three individual mounts just like last time. So three mounts with KPX and three individual mounts with the MX-5. I purchased two of these uh, 8 gram size tubes of MX-5, so I made the first mount with that particular uh, tube you saw on the video, even at the start. Then I made the second mount with the uh, 
second tube of thermal paste and the third mount with this particular uh, with this first tube of MX5. So there should be enough variation if you ask me because sometimes the individual batches as well as individual tubes can vary a little bit like what we saw when I tested the high-end thermal pastes against each other last year. The, there was a huge difference between a 10 gram sized a 10 gram sized jar of G6 Extreme and the very old three and a half gram sized tube of the same thermal paste. But anyway, so let's look at the graph. So in, so in this first graph, I have the uh, <coughs> KPX colored as darker blue and the MX5 as lighter blue so that they would uh, like illustrate their actual like physical color. But anyway, so in this graph, we have the maximum core temperatures as well as the uh, delta temperature results. But of course, Delta, delta, delta temperature results are the values we are interested in. So let's look at those straight away. <clears throat> so on the left we have the delta temperature results in R15 and, on, and the same results in Pra95 on the right. So nine runs in total in R15 and three half an hour runs in Pra95. So uh, if you look at the R15 results, KPX scored 40.072 degrees and MX5 42.35. But uh, if you look at Pra95, now this time around I used a fresh tube, a more fresh tube of Kim Minkulin KPX and now the result was what I really expected because when I tested the uh, GD900, GD900-1 and the GD007 against KPX I had worse result with KPX than what I had well, almost one year ago when I tested it against against Cryonaut, Cryonaut Extreme and GC Extreme. Since, since that time I have made quite a lot of improvements on my custom water cooling loop. Changed one entire radiator, added some better fans, fixed some bent joints on the uh, actual uh, on the actual loop itself. So I was really expecting an in, some kind of an improvement. So now we actually had an improvement. So the result with KPX now was 40 3.766 last time I mean one year ago I had a result of 44.8 I think so that's like one degree improvement or so and when I tested against GD900 the result was pretty much spot on 45 so it was actually 0.2 degrees worse than with worse custom water cooling loop almost one year ago and the MX5 scored 46.23 so uh, that was kind of the spot where I expected the MX Five would end up being so between like the GD900 and the highest end thermal paste options like the Cryonaut Extreme, KPX and so on. I have used like the MX2 and MX4 from Arctic and for me they have always been like very good middle ground performance. They offer like a pretty decent performance for very good price and they should have like they advertise they should have eight year durability. So I, I think that's probably true. That's something I cannot test right now because I just cannot make mounts that will stay like so for so long time period. The longest thermal paste applications that I have over here are on my one laptop as well as on my test motherboards like between the North Bridge and the heatsink assembly like Rampage Extremes and Rampage Free Black Edition. There I have had like KPX applied for four years or so and they still perform great but of course I cannot have like a, a comparison with accurate results. So uh, that's pretty much like uh, the end with MX5. The pricing is quite good like I can buy 20 gram sized tube of MX5 for like 20 euros so it's close to one euro per gram already here in Finland. These uh, 8 gram size tubes were like 9.5 euros each. So 19 euros for 16 grams and 20 euros for 20 grams. Jim's PC store didn't have uh, the 20 gram size tube in stock so I just bought two 8 gram size tubes of MX5 so then I, I saw that as a positive thing because then I could have some more variation in the results when I had two different individual tubes of the same thermal paste. So. Uh, let me know what you think about the MX5. Have you tested it and have you compared it against other thermal pastes? I'm pretty confident about these results. So if you don't believe these results yourself, then you are free to purchase 
these thermal pastes yourself and try, try them out yourself. I think, yes, like someone already mentioned, if I compared the thermal pastes between between CPUs die and the IHS, like with deleted CPUs, I should have like greater differences. One thing I could do is to uh, try the uh, thermal pastes on a graphics card, like custom graphics card water block. I can do that later with some uh, of the interesting models, but uh, I really want to do that with my uh, custom GPU water block rather than with stock cooling by any ways. I might do that later, but sometimes I found the deleted thermal paste comparisons to be quite, uh, they weren't so constant the results. Sometimes I had very weird results. So when, when I was really pushing the temperatures high. So I really like this method, what I'm doing right now. So just between the CPUs, IHS and a water block. If there's a clear difference between two different thermal pastes, it will show up very, very quickly. But yeah, so stay tuned for the next video as I have some other two thermal pastes coming up, uh, which will be added to this very same graph. So stay tuned for that. Those are thermal pastes. Some of you have already mentioned in the comments on my thermal paste comparison video. So stay tuned for that. And uh, thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.